I'm going to try to show you an analogy to help understand circuits. I like this on circuits exam tomorrow. I have no idea what I'm doing. A lot of people get so confused by circuits. It's something that's really difficult. And I think it's difficult because we don't really have any intuition for it. You know, when we really think about it, we understand things being thrown. We kind of understand lots of that stuff and motion and acceleration. But we don't really have a good feeling or an intuition for things like resistance and current and potential difference. So I think that can make it really tough. Now, I've looked into this quite a bit, actually, to try to explain this best to students. Uh, an analogy, you know, saying that, you know, electricity is like something else. It brings about, uh, brings about all sorts of problems. So, for example, um, an analogy might actually bring about other misconceptions of so things that actually make, you know, it might help one way, but then it brings up a lot of wrong things. But it turns out this analogy here is one that I've modified from something that I read about. This is actually what I've used uh, since I learned this analogy and sort of modified it uh, to use chocolate, for example. This is how I always teach it. And in fact, this is how I think of circuits. So I'm going to give you an analogy that I think is the best one I could find. And uh, like I said, we're going to discuss it. So that's going to be the goal here, because if you really understand this, this video and the next one, so circuit analogy two, these two are going to be uh, the combination of what I think explains everything you need for circuits. At least certainly understanding uh, R, V, and I and how they're related in series and parallel circuits. So this analogy would be this. So you have to imagine then in this world of analogy, then we're going to have real circuits on the right. We're going to have students. And the students in the analogy are going to represent a coulomb of charge. So every student, so this here would be a student here, like this would be a student and here and here and here and here and here. I would line up all the students in my class like this. Okay, everybody line up kind of in a square, you know, circuit. And now what's this thing in the middle right here? Well, that's called the battery. And that battery would be actually a particular person. It would be another student I'd call the battery. And they have an easy job. They just sit there with you know, a box of chocolates, for example, and they just give out chocolates. Now, in the real circuit, what does this represent? Well, the students are coulombs of charge. And I like this because that tells you that they are conserved. In other words, those charges don't, don't disappear or anything. They just move or they don't move. So I think that's actually a good part about this analogy here. And also, if we consider that, the, well, one piece of chocolate is one volt, you know, so we could maybe even write that down. So one chocolate, you know, equals one volt. So just so we can see sort of what we're talking about here. So one piece of chocolate. So the student who gives out, you know, chocolate, that's because the real battery, it gives out PD or, you know, potential difference. It, it gives out volts. Now remember, I talked about this in another video, that the direction of the current is technically going to be the conventional current in the IB, which is the direction of positive charges. So that means it goes, this is the positive terminal, this is the negative terminal of a battery. So technically, if you really want to be careful, the circuit current goes like this. Okay, so now we're ready to go a little bit deeper with our analogy. So now we've got to start detecting things. So we're going to have someone called an ammeter. Now this is a top view. So imagine this is like a student and I'm really, really bad at drawing. Okay. So uh, this is going to be a top view of a student. That's their head. And I guess these are kind of like their arms or something like that. This is, you know, this is <laughs> that's supposed to be hands. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad at drawing. But, uh, if you understand that this person right here, then what they would do is they would rotate. So basically every time a student comes by, you know, like a turnstile, like if you're going into an amusement park or a subway or a metro or something like that, you know, you pass through a little thing, it kind of spins around as you go through. That's what I imagine uh, this student does. They just count every student per second. Now, what does that mean in real life? Well, that's an ammeter. And that ammeter is going to be counting coulombs per second. So in other words, this right here, we're going to draw it like this right here. It's going to be called an ammeter. It's written as an A like this. And you notice that this one here is uh, placed in series. This ammeter is in series. What that means is it's actually directly connected into the circuit. In other words, like all the you know coulombs of charge have to pass through this ammeter. And it's going to be measuring, yeah, coulombs per second. So what does that tell us? Well, that's um, current, isn't it? So that means we can actually rewrite this like, you know, that we have the equation for current, right? It equals delta Q over delta T. So that equation kind of comes here. Coulombs per second, that's the current. So that means it measures the current, doesn't it? So that's why an ammeter, it measures the current. Great. Now we have another detector. It's called a voltmeter. Now that one is something that measures the difference in chocolate. Now this would be a student, maybe with a really long arm. This is like a top view here. Remember, uh, imagine this is a student here who's sort of, they've got really long arms, and they're measuring basically a difference in chocolate. So in other words, 
it has to be done from one end to the other because you're going to measure sort of chocolate, you know, going uh, in versus chocolate out, so to speak. Now, in real life, of course, that's uh, called a voltmeter here, and it measures well a potential difference and difference in potential. So this really measures V, and this is uh, connected in parallel. We're going to call it. So that's going to be important here. Voltmeter is in parallel, and um, yeah. So we're gonna. This thing here is going to be measuring voltage here, so to speak. So quote unquote voltage, which is potential difference here. So ammeter measures. Oh, sorry, voltmeter measures V. In other words, this potential difference. Now we've got something called ideal uh, detectors, and so what we can say is this, that an ideal ammeter, for example, is this ideal one that uh, measures the current, we want the resistance to be zero. In other words, we want to allow um, these coulombs to pass through it unimpeded without any problem at all, because we don't want to affect the current. We just want to let everybody pass by. So we want resistance to be zero. Whereas an uh, ideal voltmeter, because it's you know directed in parallel like this or connected in parallel, we want as little as possible of the coulombs to want to come up into this way. In other words, we want them to just fly through here happily, which means we want this resistance to be super high, like infinity, I guess, would be the best, because we don't want the current passing through here. And again, the idea here is that the voltmeter is going to be measuring a difference in chocolate, and the ammeter is going to be measuring you know uh, students per second. So in this game we're going to be playing, and we're going to have another video to explain the rest of it, we have to assume a few things here. Okay? And these are not real things, but we're going to have to assume them in order to make things work. So for starters, the coulombs are smart. In other words, the coulombs can see what's coming ahead of time so they can plan what to do. Again, real life, that's not how it works. They, it just happens. But this, in order to, to make this analogy work, there you go. And again, remember, the battery gives potential, in other words, chocolate, to each coulomb. In other words, a student has to pass by. So can you imagine then if you're the battery, you've got 10 pieces of chocolate, let's just say. Um, well, not, actually, not 10 pieces of chocolate. You give out 10 pieces of chocolate to every student who comes by. In other words, every coulomb of charge passes by and gets 10 volts. So in other words, they get 10 pieces of chocolate as they pass by. And the rule is this one. This is a really important one. That the coulombs, they have to use up all the potential. In other words, all the chocolate before they return to the battery. This is so important. So what that means is if you pass by, if you're a student and you pass by the battery here, you get your 10 pieces of chocolate here. Well, that means that by the time you get um, over to the end right here, by the time you get back, you have to have eaten it. So you're not allowed to like save it up and put it in your pocket or anything like that. So that's going to be really important. And if you imagine then this voltmeter, this person who's got really long arms, if they're measuring the voltage, in other words, the potential difference, uh, right across the battery, what are they going to measure? Well, if you gained, you know, 10 pieces of chocolate here, 10 volts, okay, fine. At this end right here, you have 10. At some point, you're eating, 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 eating. By the time you get here, you have zero left. That's why the difference in potential is going to be 10. And it goes from zero to 10. That's why we call it a potential difference. We're measuring, you know, in this analogy, a, a difference in chocolate. So either you've eaten chocolate or you've gained chocolate. But in any case, if there's a difference, then you're going to measure something here.